Hey everybody, it's Christina of Crafty Paws. I am long overdue to do a tutorial on how to use these Tim Holtz grunge blocks. Um, these are the um, letters and square pieces. The square pieces, the bases, are a little thicker than the letter pieces. Um, and basically, you can combine the letters with the base pieces um, to make kind of typeset letters. So I am going to do um, one of these, uh, like a string of these, to spell out Crafty Paws. And the first thing I did was picked out the letters that I wanted out of this package, popped them out, and then picked out the base pieces. They come in different sizes um, for each letter. And I wanted a variety. And then what I do is take the base pieces because you know they have that perforated edge so that you can pull them apart but they stay together in the packaging. I take my sanding tool. It's a set that I got at a hardware store years ago. It's a general. And they have these um, rounded ones, these flat ones, these pointed flat ones. And it's got, it comes with a handle too. I never seem to use the handle. But I got that for jewelry making at one point, and I found that it's great to just wear off these little nubby edges. Hopefully it'll focus. You can see where there are protrusions. And all you do is file that away, because you'd like a clean edge. You want it to look professional. You don't want it to look like it came out of a kit. Um, so you file those down. And the same thing goes for the letters. The letters seem to pull apart a little bit better, but occasionally you'll find, you know, like it, um, like a little remnant there. Um, and I take my smaller tool for the letters just to get into those crevices. Um, and then you start assembling. And I would recommend using a uh, gel medium. This is my favorite, Liquitex, it's a um, medium gel, uh, it's a gloss gel. And I just take my paintbrush, and an old one, not one that you would use for fine painting, and I, you know, just go about putting it on and adhering it onto the block. And I use the gel medium particularly because I want to make sure that the inks that I use later are going to not beat off or look like they don't belong. And sometimes with certain adhesives, you will get like a shinier finish, and I didn't want that. Um, so I'll go through and adhere all of these letters together, and then go ahead and paint everything with this black acrylic paint, and then I'll come back and show you the next step. So these letters are all painted black. I've adhered the letter to the base, as you can see. That's a P. And then I just take a really fine grit sandpaper. This is a 220. And I just roll it like that. Sorry for the noise and the shaking. <laughs> um, but basically, I do that until I like the amount of distressing. And as you can see, I also did the same to the edges. I just ran it across the whole edge on all four sides. And when I get all of the letters to this point, I'm going to do the last uh, little portion. So as you can tell, I have sanded down the letters. Um, and like I said, I just used 220 grit sandpaper. You know, the higher the number on sandpaper, the finer the grit is. So I didn't want to, you know, make this all pocked and um, rough. I wanted a really smooth finish, but I wanted to take off that paint off of the top of the letters and the edges. So I did that. And then I just received my order from Joann's and finally got this distress marker brushed corduroy. Uh, Joann's was having a sale on the markers. I don't know if it's still going on and they had like shipping for $1.99. So I was able to pick up finally almost all of the distress markers. I'm now just missing iced spruce and gathered twig. Um, but anyway, that was total aside. 
Um, so you take this, and I actually consider just leaving it like this, but to be more realistic, I wanted to show, you know, or make it more uh, grungy and vintagey. So I took that brush corduroy marker and just colored over the letters. And I had done these before I had gotten um, this color, and I tried, um, what was it? It was like a green color um, that I had in an ink pad. You could also do this with an ink pad. I tried walnut stain. That was too dark. Um, I could barely tell the difference between the black and the uh, background and the letters. And I also had... Um, Oh yeah, this was it. I tried forest moss, but that again was too dark. This brush corduroy seems to work really great. Still looking authentic, like they're old used type letter press um, letters, um, but light enough so that you can actually see the letters um, without you know trying to strain too much. Um, and I did a few others so you can see. Um, I think they come out looking really cool, very authentic, although they are faux. Um, and that's it. That's my tutorial. I hope you guys uh, will give this a try. And uh, I'll hope to share my final project with you guys using all of these things that I've been working on recently um, in the next few days. Thanks for watching. Bye.